All right, well, you saw the title of the video. I'm gonna be teaching you some of my tricks and tips for thrifting for music. So I love both records and CDs. And thrift stores are a wonderful place to increase both of these in your collection. I started going to thrift stores, um, as longtime viewers of the channel know, um, all 56 of you, um, I modded Nerf guns for a long time. And so I'd go to thrift stores to find super cheap ones. And one day I decided to go like check out the CDs. I actually found some super good stuff. So that's how I did that. And actually I found my first vinyl record at a thrift store as well. So thrifting has been a big part of my collection. And I've been doing this for about three years, give or take. So I wanna share just some of the tips and tricks that I have that I've used to find cool records and CDs. So yeah, let's just hop into the tips. Okay, before I hop into the tips, real quick, I'm gonna break this video up into three parts. So I'm gonna have one part called like the general tips. It works for both CDs and records. Then I'll have one for vinyls, um, just some tips and tricks for vinyls and thrift stores. And then I'm gonna have one for CDs. Um, that way you can watch what you want to watch. Um, Cause I know some people aren't really into collecting both. Um, some people are just into CDs, you know, it's a whole thing. So yeah. First, we'll start with the general tips. Okay, and with each one of these tips, I'll be showing you like a CD that, or a record that ties in with it. Cause I think that's just fun. And you can hear some stories. So this one, Jimmy Cliff's The Harder They Come. Then first tip is get to know music, learn things. Take some time on the internet to look up some like top lists from genres or years you like i'm a big fan of the 1970s so i had looked up the best albums in 1970 and pitchfork's album came on now i'm not the biggest fan of that list but it gave me a really good comprehensive list of things that i had never seen or heard of before so then when i went to my local thrift store and when i found this album i knew it was a good one and i knew it was worth keeping this album rocks. It's got so much different, diverse, um, early um, reggae stuff. And it's just like nonstop, great track, one after another. And so I'm super glad that I've got to do this. Um, I like watching YouTube channels where they just show what they have and things like that. Ranking of albums and talking about albums, like the most obscure albums you've ever seen, you've ever heard before. And I think that's just a super good way to just dive into music. And you know, when you're at the thrift store too, you're paying pretty cheap for these CDs, especially CDs. Records can be pricey sometimes, but like I, I think I paid a dollar for this CD and it was definitely well worth it. So get to know music, get to be familiar with album covers, kind of get a feel for what albums like look like and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you'll find good stuff, stuff you've never even heard of before. Okay, so tip number two is to look into your favorite artist's inspiration for recommendations. Um, this one's really easy for me to say because I'm a big David Bowie fan. David Bowie was the one who got me into music and he lists off so many people that are influences and he's tied to so many people. Um, it's this one, Velvet Underground and Nico. This is a classic album and I never even heard about it before. I was at a thrift store and I saw the words Andy Warhol. And so on Hunky Dory, I didn't really even know who Andy Warhol was until buying this CD. But uh, there's a song called um, Andy Warhol. And there's a song for Lou Reed. So pretty much Hunky Dory has a couple songs shouting out the Velvet Underground and Nico. I saw it and I was like, you know what? I don't know what this is at all, um, but I'm going to buy it. I'm going to listen to it. And I'm so grateful I did. Um, super cool, super good album. I'm sure you all know. It's well worth the dollar I paid for it. And this is a, something that works well with just any type of musician too. You know, like look for musicians you really like and then look for them when you see them at a thrift store and like, hey, this is a new album I've never seen before. You know, it's, it's super cheap, just buy it. You might like find some new music you've never seen, heard before. So, um, I got this in my local thrift store. Let's see. 
I just op one just opened by my house. There used to be one like 30 minutes away. Um, but nobody's going to it. Nobody's going to it for CDs anyway. There's a lot of people like looking to resell other stuff. But nobody's going for it for CDs. And I find like the craziest stuff there. I've been finding super good stuff recently. And it's just because nobody's looking for it. So Beatles Magical Mystery Tour. I'm not the biggest Beatles fan ever. But I know this is like their most trippy and like psychedelic one. And I do like more psychedelic music. I really do enjoy this album. So yeah, just make sure, you know, like talk to the staff. Ask them, are there a lot of people looking for CDs? Are there a lot of people looking for records here? Like when you usually see them come up, they're usually pretty friendly and they'll talk to you about it. Um, if they notice anything about it. So that's huge. I heard one of like that, my second closest to store before this one opened up. Um, apparently there was like a poacher guy who just like sits there all day or something like that. I don't know if that's true, but he like will buy everything as soon as it comes out. So make sure you're trying to find one that's not being touched a ton and just, you know, visit, visit it as much as you possibly can. Next tip is trust your gut and do buy and buys. So when you're trusting your gut, you kind of look at the album cover. You look at what's on here and things like that. So this is a very popular album. And when I was very young and collecting, I had no idea what this was. So I just kind of looked at the back, you know, some key things. I saw Atlantic Records. Sorry, the case is all messed up. And then I always look for like a year. That's something I always do kind of gives me a general idea of what the production is going to sound like, what type of music is going to be there, what, you know, what was around at the time. And so I saw 1974. Okay, perfect. That's right in my warehouse. So the album looked cool enough. And I was like, you know what? It's a dollar. Like, what could go wrong? And I was definitely not disappointed. This is a great album. The great little CD, great little connect collection of, just really good folk rock stuff. Um, would it have been something that I would have actively been looking for at the time? Probably not. I probably, probably wouldn't have even known about it. So I'm very glad I trusted my gut and did a blind buy about it. All right, this next one is a hard one for me, but it's be okay with getting nothing. Um, I have to drive out quite a ways to go to thrift stores. And so I go and all of a sudden I like look through the CDs and there's nothing that I'm liking, nothing that I'm wanting. And so then I see Jimmy Buffett. I, I can't even tell you anything about this album, to be honest, because I don't care for it. I bought it and I've never listened to it. Never even wanted to listen to it. And so don't waste your money on CDs you don't think you'd buy, like, or even would try listening to. Don't buy something just to buy something to justify the trip. It's okay to walk out with nothing. I kind of feel like almost guilty or just disappointed that I can't find anything. And so then I'll just like do these random in purchase buys, which I don't even end up listening to the CDs. So don't do that. All right. The next tip and the last one for general is aim for weekly visits. This is so key because like I said in the last tip, you are going to strike out. And be okay with striking out. That's just going to happen. But if you visit weekly, you will find new things. That's just what happens. Things get cycled through. And I found this Renaissance album. Super cheap. Super good album. Super good prog rock. And I love prog rock. And it's just like, it was just buried in there. So chicks check every single week. If you got the time, just look through and see what's in there. Because you'll never know what you'll find. I'm very grateful I purchased this album. It kind of goes with um, all the other tips before buying this one. And cool album art, just a band I was just learning about. Super cool stuff. So, yeah. Let's go into the vinyl record tips. Okay, so my number one tip for vinyl records, besides the um, general tips we've talked about before, is knowing your labels and your promos. So I'm choosing this one. As you can tell, or if you don't know, this is a white promo label, which means it wasn't made for commercial release. 
And so that instantly already kind of helps the record. It doesn't guarantee the record, but it means the record was probably kept in better shape and that it was an early pressing. So it probably sounds better and they're most likely worth more. Um, I remember going to a thrift store and pulling up and looking through the records. There's some pretty good records, um, some good stuff I hadn't seen before. And there was this one that I wasn't 100% sure what it was. Um, I was just looking through it. It was just in a generic black um, sleeve, but it had a bunch of different remixes of the song. Turns out it was a DJ record um, for a super expensive record. And I recognized that it was a DJ record there, or, a, or at least a promo re uh, record um, and all that stuff, just because I've done my research and I've watched YouTube videos about it and stuff like that. So that is key. I don't have that one anymore. I did sell it, but yeah, know your, know your labels, know what a promo is, um, know how to identify those things. Just know how to do it right off the bat. Because most of the times I've been in like, the thrift stores I've been at are like Wi-Fi dead zones. So just get used to it, you know, experiment. You'll have cool results. All right, my next tip for records is condition is key. So I found this Jimmy Smith one at a thrift store. It was so awesome. Sorry, there's kind of a glare, but this thing is in great shape. There are some light scratches on it, yeah, you can definitely see that. And I definitely do plan on like cleaning this up a little bit more. I'm getting like a a cleaner. So I plan on cleaning all my records and it's not perfectly clean right now, but it's in super good condition. And with records, really, you can't just go around buying them nilly willy without checking to make sure if the record works. I have um, a Harry Nelson one. Um, Nelson Skimelson, uh, Nelson Skimelson, yes, it's a funny name, and unfortunately, the record has just gotten so bad, I can't even play it, which is unfortunate, because I used to play it on my old, uh, <laughs> beater first record table, but now I just, I just can't play it anymore, because the condition really wasn't there, so don't buy records that don't work, last, and final tip, specifically for collecting records that I have at thrift stores, is to clean your record sleeves. This one is actually just like pretty good in condition already. But the only problem was there was a price sticker and I actually got it off right away off of disinfectant wipes. But there's different ways to make sure your records are clean. Disinfectant wipes can help get rid of any dirt or grime and they can just make your records look a lot better. Um, this goes as well, just cleaning your actual records. You don't know where that thing's been. There's probably a lot of dust and dirt um i have a homemade cleaning solution for my records that i do and it cleans it up really well and yeah just make sure these things feel at home treat them like they're your love child <laughs> because they really are you just bought them in you're welcoming them to your home so make sure they are clean and good i there's some other tips and tricks for cleaning record sleeves and stuff like that and i can go into that a whole nother video but i'll just leave it at that for now um just make sure they're clean make sure they sound good so now let's go on to the cds all right for this next tip the first one for the cds kind of goes well with what we were talking about with records is making sure all your cds are there i can't even tell you how many times i find like a cool cd case close to the edge by yes and i open it up and it's like a freaking programming code for the pc or whatever it's so frustrating but make sure your records are all clean and are all there this is the sound of science uh box set and it's got all the cds and it's in all super good shape and i found this thing for like way cheap at um, a thrift store and it's just super clean it looks nice it feels like i didn't find it at a thrift store and so just make sure just check check and make sure the cds aren't scratched because scratch cds on a cd player is not a fun sound to listen to so trick number two or tip number two is to get extra cd cases so 
Fortunately, my talking heads fear music kind of the cover was torn up. But before this case was absolutely destroyed. It was so nasty. Um, water damage, weird sticky stuff on it. But the CD was clean. This what for the most part was clean. There's just a few tears on it, which I, I can't complain about too much. So what I ended up doing was I just looked and saw a CD with a similar, with the exact same case type. And then I bought it. I think the one I bought ended up being like sealed or something like that still. So I did that. Another thing you could do is you could just have a bunch of spare CD cases on hand. That's the awesome thing about CDs is you can just switch these cases out so well. And they then just look so much better. I can't even like show you what it looked like before. I didn't take any photos or anything, but boom, you make it look so much better by just switching out the CD case like that. Okay, for this next one, I just want to talk a little bit about Grazed Hits. Um, this is the Cars Grazed Hits. This is the thing that got me into the cars. Um, I grew up listening to the Poison cover album, and it's got just what I needed. And so I decided to buy this. So this was one of the better Greatest Hits I've bought. Personally, I'm not a super big fan of Greatest Hits. You find them a ton while thrifting. Um, you know, they just don't have the same listen appeal to me. But it's definitely a good way to get into the artist and get a super good cheap CD for cheap. There's some really good greatest hits out there, such as the Aerosmith's greatest hits from um, the one that's red and has the white logo. And then Queen's greatest hits is also really good. Um, but honestly, sometimes it's like hit or miss. I Sometimes I have a hard time listening to greatest hits too because I don't feel like they necessarily flow like a normal album does. And that kind of hurts it for me but definitely you can keep an eye out for greatest hits that's something um just kind of like be aware of it you're gonna see them a lot and if you're a big fan of just like the songs and stuff like that go for it greatest hits are amazing you can find them a ton and you can find them for like big names small names anything but if you like albums um stick to stick to looking for albums don't feel like you have to buy greatest hits all right, this next tip might be a controversial one. I don't really know. Um, I think it's all right, depending on the situation, but print covers. The thing is, I think I found this CD at, yeah, I found it at a thrift store. And you can tell that I printed it because the back isn't done. And the fact that this is, it's a pretty poor print job, to be honest. I wish I, I need to get a better CD case for this to make it look more legitimate. The CD itself is fine. It's a legitimate record. Uh, well, CD. It's a legitimate CD. But the problem is it just didn't come in the case. And so I just decided, you know, I'm going to buy it. And I'll just print off the case real quick. I think it looks pretty good. So that's something you can do. If you find a CD you really like and it doesn't have a case or it's just in the wrong case, what you can do is you can then turn that case into the correct and updated case. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this encourages you or inspires you to go check out thrift stores. Unless you're checking out my thrift store around me, then don't do that because I would like the CDs and records for my own selfish reasons. I'm just kidding, of course, but I hope you really did enjoy this video. It's a lot of fun to make. I love seeing what I can find at thrift stores. It's part of one of the fun parts of collecting finals and CDs. And I found so many good um, records that I've never listened to before that I don't think I would have listened to before if I didn't find them at a thrift store. So much of my, especially my CD collection is built off of uh, <laughs> these ones that I find at thrift stores because I can find them for so cheap. So yeah, never discount thrift stores. You can find amazing things there if you know what you're doing. So let me know what are some of the tips that you've seen while doing thrift stores. Have you ever tried it before? I wanna hear some of your thoughts. So just let me know. Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. You have a great rest of your day.